The world can be a scary place, with some locations being so terrifying and dangerous that officials have to ban them in order to keep their people safe. Hello, I'm Andrew Boyd, and though being trapped in this lifeless void space for months has made me desperate for a change of scene, you won't find me setting foot in any of the places featured here today. These are the top 5 cursed locations in history you are prohibited from visiting. Number 5. North Brother Island, New York The North Brother Island is one of two small islands located in the East River of New York City. The island remained uninhabited until 1885, with the only trace of humanity being a small lighthouse that was erected in 1869. The island began seeing more use in 1885 when the Riverside Smallpox Hospital moved from Roosevelt Island to North Brother when their mission expanded to treating and isolating victims of of other quarantinable diseases such as typhoid, tuberculosis, and especially polio. In 1904, a steamship called the General Slocum was set ablaze and over a thousand people perished, either from the fire or from drowning while trying to escape, and ended up washing ashore on the island. Of course, many people have reported seeing a ghostly steamship in the years since and sightings of the spectral victims of the fire are reported from afar, with them wandering the beach of the island, seemingly lost and in pain. One of the most famous residents at the hospital was Mary Mallon, otherwise known as Typhoid Mary, who was confined on the island for 20 years until her death in 1938, after being declared a public health menace for infecting between 51 and 122 people while working as a cook. As public health measures like vaccines began to be adopted in the 30s and 40s, the need for a quarantine hospital lessened to the point where the hospital was closed. It was converted into housing for war veterans who were going to school in the city following World War II before being converted into a rehabilitation facility for young people suffering from substance abuse issues. But it was closed in 1963 due to the cost of upkeep and the widespread corruption of the staff. In the years since, it was considered for a variety of purposes, including housing for the homeless and an extension of the jail at Rikers Island, but the danger of the unmarked manholes and the advanced dilapidation of the buildings, which are mostly collapsed and overrun by poison ivy, resulted in such ideas being abandoned. It was eventually decided that the site would serve as a bird sanctuary for herons and other wading shorebirds. Although many of the original 25 buildings are still standing in some shape or form, it has been made off limits to the public and is only available for supervised visits for those intending to go ashore for quote, compelling academic and scientific purposes. With its history of confinement and death, perhaps it is for the best that this site has been deemed unfit for public visitation, although the history of the island is indeed compelling. Number 4. Boblo Island Amusement Park, Ontario North America has no shortage of amusement parks for families and thrill-seekers alike to visit. The Canadian province of Ontario has several to choose from, including Canada's Wonderland, Great Wolf Lodge, and Splashtown Niagara. One theme park that you won't be able to buy a ticket for, however, is the Boblo Island Amusement Park, located on the island of Bois Blanc, just above the mouth of the Detroit River. The park was opened in 1898 and used a ferry system to service guests from Ontario and Detroit and bring them to the island where they had a variety of attractions to keep them occupied and having fun. Some of these included the Falling Star, a log flume, a theater, a sky tower, ferris wheel, a zoo, a carousel, and a dance hall financed by Henry Ford. It also had three roller coasters, the Screamer, the Nightmare, and the Sky Streak. It also had Boblo's scooter boats, which were essentially aquatic bumper cars. The park operated for many years before eventually closing down for financial reasons in late 1993. There are still ferries that operate in order to get island residents on and off the island, but the now abandoned amusement park has been declared off limits by the property owners. Of course, the dilapidated carousel building, dance pavilion, and sky Tower have since proven to be too appealing for urban explorers to keep away from, and the eerie overgrown site still sees a variety of visitors. Like any good amusement park, 
it of course has a reputation for being haunted by a variety of ghosts. My personal favorite of the ghost stories is the story of Smiley the Magician. Back when the theater still operated and showed a variety of different performers, one of the most consistently booked performers of the 30s and 40s was a magician named Smiley Smilovich. Smiley was an old school magician who had trained with Houdini in the late 20s and was known for his seemingly death-defying tricks. One of his most famous tricks was a metamorphosis trick, where he would put a trunk on stage, climb into it, lock it, and then have the trunk set on fire. He would escape through a trap door, the trunk would burn away, revealing that he had escaped, and the crowd would go wild. One day he was doing this trick as usual, but when he locked himself in the trunk, he had a heart attack and died. The trunk was then set on fire, and the audience was left in terror as Smiley's body burned in front of them. Ever since then, Smiley's ghost would apparently haunt the theater, being sighted watching shows that were performed there, showing a special interest in magic shows. In the years since the park's closure, the occasional rumor of the magician being spotted has come up from the various urban explorers checking out the overgrown buildings. Would you ever be brave enough to explore Boblo Island Amusement Park? And if you did, would you be on the lookout for spectral magicians? Number 3. Bongar Fort, India This 17th century fortress has a reputation for being the most haunted place in India, with people refusing to build homes near the fort for fear of falling under its curse. Despite this reputation, there is some debate as to why it is haunted, with two very different stories being told. In the first story, a king named Mado Singh wanted to build the fort but needed the permission of an ascetic monk who lived on the nearby land. The monk granted him permission to build the fort, but warned him that the fort's shadow must never fall upon the monk's home. Madho agreed to these terms and built the fort to the specifications. However, one of his successors added to the fortifications vertically, causing the fort's shadow to engulf the forbidden home, causing the fort to fall to ruin and become haunted. Another version of the tale is that an evil sorcerer fell in love with a beautiful princess named Ratnavati. She rebuffed his advances, so he bewitched a cosmetic that she was going to use that would force her to fall in love with him. She found out about this scheme and poured the cosmetic onto a large boulder, which then crushed the sorcerer. With his dying breath, the sorcerer cursed the fort so that no one would ever be able to live there in peace. The fort is open to the public during the day, but it is forbidden to set foot on the property at night as that is when the hauntings occur, with several people who have tried to disprove the ghost by staying overnight, going missing, or coming out catatonic. Number 2. The Paris Catacombs When you consider how many locations like old houses or abandoned mental institutions have a reputation for being haunted due to the discovery of just a few bodies, it comes as no surprise that many of the world's catacombs have apparently been discovered to be haunted by specters of the past. Take for example the Paris Catacombs. Built as a mass grave in the 18th century, in order to deal with the overflowing of local cemeteries, the Paris catacombs hold the remains of millions of Parisians. A few years after being established, Louis-Étienne Ericard decided to make the catacombs a work of art by arranging the bones into elaborate displays. An inscription in the catacombs even reads, Arrête, c'est ici l'Empire de la Mort, which translates to Stop, this is the Empire of the Dead. Although a small section of the catacombs are available for visitors to peruse, the vast majority of the seemingly endless tunnels are banned for tourists to visit. In the years since they were constructed, there have been several reports of ghosts wandering the halls of the labyrinth-like grave, searching for a way out. As if that weren't bad enough, Rumor has it that if you come into the catacombs at night, you will hear the whispers of all the spirits of the catacombs, trying to convince you to venture deeper and deeper into the catacombs until you become lost and unable to find your way out. Another often reported ghost is that of Philibert Asper, who was a doorman at the Val de Grasse hospital, who made his way into the catacombs in late 1793 when he was sent to fetch liquor from a cellar, with only the light of a candle to find his way out. He soon became lost and confused. It is also theorized that he was quite drunk at the Time. His candle eventually went out and it became pitch black. He was missing for 11 years before his remains were found and identified due to the hospital keys and the bottle of liquor in his hand. He was interred in the catacombs at the exact location where he was found. In the years since, urban explorers calling themselves cataphiles have reported seeing the spirit of Asper wandering the halls of the catacombs with his candle on the anniversary of him going missing. The cataphiles are known for paying their respects at his grave and they have named his spirit the protector of the 
cataphiles. Number one, Poveglia Island, Italy. In the lagoon between Venice and Lido, you will find the small island known as Poveglia. It was first inhabited in the year 421, when mainlanders relocated to the island to escape barbarian invaders. Due to its small size, the island was easily defensible and frankly not worth the trouble for invaders to bother attacking. The small community stayed on the island for centuries, enjoying their independence from taxes and laws of the mainland, but their population eventually dwindled, leaving the island uninhabited. This changed in the year 1348, when the bubonic plague was ravaging Venice, was ravaging Venice and the surrounding towns. Poveglia became a quarantine island, with symptomatic Italians being banished there to die. The center of the island had a giant pyre, where tens of thousands of plague victims' bodies were burnt to prevent the spread of the disease. When the plague returned in the year 1630, the island became a quarantine colony once again with even more bodies being burnt in the town square. Naturally, the location developed a reputation for being haunted by the tens of thousands of displaced and abandoned plague victims, but the island's creepy history was far from over. Aside from a brief period where Napoleon used the island to store gunpowder, relying on the ghost stories of the place to keep unwanted visitors away, the island remained largely uninhabited until an insane asylum was built on the island in the late 1800s. It was a brutal hospital that was poorly constructed and used more to exit the patients from society than to help rehabilitate them. One of the doctors working there in the 30s conducted strange and cruel experiments on the patients for years, before going mad himself and flinging himself from the bell tower. Though this bell tower was removed years ago, people still claim to hear the sound of the bells emanating from the island. The hospital became an old folks home briefly, but that closed in 1975, leaving the island completely abandoned. A construction crew tried to restore the hospital, but suddenly stopped, refusing to return to the island island due to how intensely haunted the island has become. The government has banned anyone from visiting the island, but its reputation has made it an infamous and terrifying location. With that, another journey has come to an end. The evil forces that run this dark dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to send you to one of these haunted and cursed locations to teach you a lesson. I'm off to continue digging my own grave in preparation of the dark days that are approaching, but perhaps we will meet again soon and I can regale you with more tales of the macabre and the disturbing here on Top 5 Scary Videos.